I've been going through these old quilt patterns clipped from newspapers. They're just so much fun to look at. Well, probably the most common source of quilt patterns during the 1930s was the local newspaper. In 1933, the makers of Mountain Mist Quilt Batting reported that more than 400 newspapers were carrying quilt-related features. So besides Florence Leganke and the Nancy Page Club, there were a number of others that wrote columns for the newspapers. One of the most important quilt columnists was Ruby McKim. Ruby and her husband went around the country soliciting newspapers to carry her column, and they were often apart for months at a time. I have some of her patterns clipped from the Kansas City Star. This one is Clay's Choice. You can see right here, a historical block is easily pieced. And here, McKim Studios in the corner. And this one is Rob Peter and Pay Paul. It says right here, four buff or four blue. They're just great. Well, Ruby wrote for the Kansas City Star from September 1928 to July 1930 for just two years. And unlike Florence with her charming stories, Ruby felt patchwork was so easy that she didn't even include written instructions. Oh, I love her English flower garden quilt. The flowers just have those jazzy straight lines because they were meant to be sewn on the machine rather than applique by hand. The gingham and the calicos are just so quaint. And it's interesting that the green has remained this bright. Well, Ruby described this quilt as picturesque as Anne Hathaway's English Cottage. Well, the pattern is in her book, 101 Patchwork Patterns. Now, this is a reprint, of course, but this is the first quilt book that I ever purchased. She, she suggested that you use a green check for the flower pot, and then you can see the straight lines of the flower. And then in the next pattern, the basket of oranges, Ruby suggested that the quilt maker use turquoise, orange and green for the color selection. And it's actually the same basket pattern as in Grandmother's Garden Quilt. Well, that quilt maker followed her advice to the T. Well, Ruby described the naturalistic fruit and leaves atop a patchwork basket as especially charming. And then the turquoise looks as bright and beautiful as the day it was made. And the quilting is just fantastic in this quilt. Ruby said basket quilts are always endowed with a quaint charm that assures their popularity. We'll use Ruby's baskets as your inspiration. The air is refreshing, but it's time to get to work. Well, most beautiful quilts made with flowers are done with the applique method. This is an applique tulip quilt designed by Laura Wheeler and Alice Brooks. Now they were those two fictitious ladies from the design studio known as Old Chelsea Station in New York. And the blocks are huge with big pieces and gentle curves to applique. When four blocks are set together, a secondary pattern is created right in the center. Well, the original quilt maker did all of her work by hand, and then my cousin Carol Ann finished it with machine quilting in the echo style. Oh, it resembles Hawaiian quilting, doesn't it? And it is beautiful. But not all quilt makers applique their tulip blocks because this one is pieced. And it's called the Dutch Tulip. Oh, look at this. The large pieces with gentle curves make it easy to do. Just look at that hand stitching. It's amazing. Well, Barbara Brackman identified this one as the Ladies Art Company Tulip, founded in St. Louis in 1889. Now, they were the first mail order company in the United States. So can you imagine ordering quilt patterns by mail in 1889. Now, Ruby McKim had a different idea for her tulips. She did them in an art deco style with straight lines all to be done on the sewing machine. And then she set the tulip blocks together with a solid rectangle 
trimmed with triangles. And I just love this straight line quilting in it. Well, this is my kind of quilting. And I have a great strip method to achieve that same look. So let's grow those tulips. Ruby said the tulip is simple to do, and she was right. And she said it's attractive in tones of pink or rose, two different values. You could do yellow, a medium, and a dark, and then orchid, medium and a dark. Then you need to have a background and a green. Ooh, beautiful colors. Now let's take a look at the tulip block itself because we want to focus right here on the tulip and just make this part of it. Comes from strips. They are either two and a half or four and a half. And you can see just the three different values make up the whole top of that tulip and make that little peak along there. So let's just use the yellow. How about the medium and the dark yellow? Now to make five tulips alike, all you need to have is a four and a half inch wide strip or an eighth of a yard. And you can actually get those five tulips out of it. So I'm going to start right now by dividing this piece equally into thirds. So if you cut off a 14 inch strip on the fold, you've got two 14 inch strips. And then just take the remainder, oh it's just a little longer than 14 inches, but open it up and cut it into a two and a half inch strip. Ooh, let me line that up, move that along here. Looking good. So all that you have left from that four and a half inch strip is this one. Now take the dark and we want to start and cut a two and a half inch strip out of it. So I'm just going to open it up like this, line up the two and a half inches, make it about 14 inches or just like one third of it. Cut it up and over and the remaining part of this strip is cut into two and a half, into one and a half inch sections. So let me pull that down. Let's see, how about a little math? If it's four and a half inches wide and you're cutting one and a half inch pieces, ooh, I need my calculator. No, I don't. You can get three one and a half inch strips out of that piece. So go along there, cut the pieces out of it. Well, that takes care of the medium and the dark. Now take a background fabric. Take your background and cut it into a four and a half inch piece and cut it also into thirds, equal thirds or 14 inch pieces. Now one of these is going to go with each one of the color values and then one right down here. Then take a two and a half inch piece and cut it also into equal pieces, though they're like 14 inches long or so. Stack those up. And then for each one of the tulips, you need to have two more that are one and three fourths inches wide. Well, that's pretty easy for the cutting. Now let's get them all lined up. Let's see. We're going to start up here and we're just going to focus with row one do row two and row three. Now row one starts out with the background four and a half and right beside it you take a medium strip. It's approximately 14 inches. Oh, that's a little bit long there but it'll work fine. Then the one beside it we need to have the uh, medium four and a half and then take a background, the background two and a half. And then there's only one more row. The third row is going to be the medium and beside it the dark, a two and a half inch piece. So that makes up the three rows. These we're going to get to in just a minute. So I think I'll just move those out of the way. So take row one, flip this piece right sides together, row two, right sides together, and then row three right sides together. Well you need to have a quarter inch seam allowance and 15 stitches to the inch. Oh and I will tell you right now a quarter inch foot just like I have on here would really help out because you want to have a perfect quarter inch and I really recommend that you go ahead and do a little sample sewing and measure it and make sure it's right and because this is strips you can just speed along maybe use a magnet something to help you guide 
You could even use your serger if you can get a perfect quarter of an inch seam in it. Let me just fit this one right behind it and add that one right on. Now, with all of these beautiful colors, you must know that Ruby loved, loved artwork and all of the drawing. As a child, she always had a sketch pad with her, and they actually said that sketch pad was part of her wardrobe. Well, this is going along good. Now I'm doing all three sets here, and it's not enough for 15 tulips. But if you would like to do 20 tulips, how about queen size? Oh, you want to make a queen size quilt? Then all you need to add is one other set of flowers. So you have 20 tulips, enough for a queen size quilt. Perfect. All right, how about pressing? to the dark side. <laughs> well, I'm on wheels today. So just take and use a gridded pressing mat and put your strip right along the grid. Set your seam. I like to have steam in my iron. And then just lift this up and press that seam right behind the dark. Okay, this is row two. I'm just gonna set that one aside. Row, or row three, this is row two. Whoa, better get it right. Line it up along here. Now I want to have the dark on the top so I can set it, lift it up, and go right into the seam along there. Well, so many people ask me if I like to use steam in my iron. I think that steam in the iron really helps get the job done. All right, perfect seams pressed to the dark. Okay, now we're going to start and just stack these up and place them right sides together. So take row one, put it right side up, background at the top. Row two is going to go on top, right sides together to it. And just go ahead and place the background on top as well. We're stair-stepping our medium fabrics. Now once you have them right sides together, ooh, and the best thing is that there's no seams to wiggle together. Okay, take your uh, smaller ruler. This time I think that a 6 by 12 really helps square off that left end, cut off those salvages, get rid of that, and then cut them into two and a half inch segments. Let me see if I just use the grid. I've got the ruler, I've got the grid all lined up at two and a half inches. Just tip up your ruler, move it along, and you should be able to get your five tulips out of this set. So I'm just going to take these two and I'll just set them aside. They're ready for sewing. I'm going to take my third row and do exactly the same thing, only a single layer. Just square off the left end, line that up, get rid of that salvage, get rid of it, and cut two and a half inch segments. Again, you could go ahead and layer cut if you'd want, but I think that if you do it this way, then it'll just keep you from getting confused. All right, how about some sewing? I've got the pairs. Uh, the way the seams have been pressed is so that the seams are always going down. That makes it much easier, especially if you'd use the serger, then you won't be um, twisting your seams. You can go ahead and use your stiletto, hold this flat as you go across it. If you're doing five tulips, just go ahead, pick up the next set and butt it right behind. Keep that train going. Don't let it get off the track. Okay, and once you have the rows, the first two rows sewn, then take them, line them up with a grid, set that seam, cross the top, and then just open and press them, press right into that fold. Perfect. Oh my gosh, looking good. I think I like the wheels on this chair. Boy, I never have to stand up on it. Okay, now take these two rows. I'm going to take row three and stair step the medium. It's going up along here so that the dark is down here. And you're just going to take this piece, flip it right sides together to it, and you would assembly line sew all the third rows right along there. Let me just do one for you so you can see it. Oh, you know me, I'm always in a hurry. Have to get it done fast. Just match up those outside edges. Once you have that third row on, same thing, you know it. Just take it, line it up on the grid, set that seam, and lift it up and over. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and get the strips ready for the base because this is just coming along great. Got the dark down here, then the medium's got that little zigzag and the background at the top. We'll set those aside and then just grab up some strips. Oh boy, you'd be surprised how I got these done. This is the one and three fourths inch background and the one and a half inch dark. Press those seams to the dark side. Got a whole long strip, two long strips actually. And all I want to do is just take and square off that left end. This is for the base of it. So it needs to be cut into five and a fourth inch pieces. So line up five and a fourth and cut. For every tulip, you need to have two of them. And they're going right along the bottom like this. And we're going to have them down so low that when we square it up, we have that quarter inch seam right at the bottom. Okay, so let's just take this one. We'll flip it right sides together and got a little extra space up at the top and just sew that right along there. It's um, actually has just a bit hanging out at the top. You know quilters, what we have. If we don't have to use it, we're not going to waste that extra fabric up there. So just have a little space up at the top. It's about an inch. Sew it right along this side and slide along here. Set that seam and press it up. Now, hmm, on that outside edge looks like it needs straightened up a little bit. So right along here, I'm just going to take the 6 uh, by 12 ruler, line it up on the straight line. How about a little trim job? It's just like a little haircut along there. And then once that edge is straight, take this second piece and it'll line up here one fourth inch down from the top. See the piece right there? It's just a little bit, but we've also allowed for that quarter inch seam there. So let's flip it this way. Now actually, you fight the seams if you go down this way. So how about if we turn it over this way and then we can see all of the seams as we go along. A little bit of a flip, and particularly if you're doing it on the serger. You don't want to be fighting those seams underneath. You don't want them to flip over on you. Heavens to Betsy. No, flipped out seams on you. All right, that's the last part for sewing the top of the tulip. Let's just give it one more press, set that seam, and open it up. And now this piece is going to be squared up into a tulip. Sounds like a miracle to me, but the miracle that happens is with the six inch square up ruler. So turn it so that the base is a to the top and to the right of you. Line up the diagonal line on the six inch square up ruler so that it goes right on these two seams. The diagonal line is there and the tip of the ruler is right out here and here. And automatically when you do that, you end up with your quarter inch seam right up here. Hold it tight and trim on just three sides. Once, twice, and then right around here. And so once these pieces are cut off, they're just extra, they're waste. And now for the miracle of all, when you turn it around, you've got your perfect tulip, your perfect flower. You've got your tips right out here. It's perfect. You've got a little bit of a quarter inch seam there, quarter inch seam there. All I have to do is make the stem and the leaves and I'll get that ready. The green stems and leaves add a refreshing touch to the pastel colors and they are even easier than the tulips. They come from strips. The center part of the stem, this strip right here is a one and a fourth inch wide strip. Got it salvage to salvage. And then the two side background pieces are one and three fourths inches wide. Now when you sew them together, it's best if you just sew a background and a stem and press it because this ends up being so narrow and then add the second side and once again press the seam towards the dark. Now take this strip for five tulips you can actually get four stems out of one strip so you need to have one and a half to do the five. So take your six by twelve ruler and line it up and cut these at 10 inches. Told you this part was easy because this is going to go right here in the center. Now the leaves come from one and three fourths inch wide green strips. Got a bunch of them all stacked up so all you want to do is just square off that left end, 
trim off the salvages, and then cut these into eight and a half inch pieces. Now you need to have two of these for every tulip. And we need to add some diagonal line cuts on the background fabric. So cut one and three fourths inch squares out of the background, one for each one of them, and then go ahead and draw a diagonal line on the wrong side. Let me line that up like this. Diagonal lines on each one of the squares, and then when you sew them, the tricky part is that they have to go in opposite directions. Let's see, if we turn them like this, they're gonna get put right on top of the uh, green strip, one going like this, and then in the same tulip, you would be doing it like this. Now all you need to do is just sew on that diagonal line, trim it, trim those edges away at a quarter inch. But if you've got a lot of tulips to do, how about using a little tool like this? Now this is one piece of plastic that I actually taped down onto my sewing machine. I put this white fabric underneath so you can really see. But so that you can uh, use that diagonal line and that, that um, the needle right there, you actually cut out a piece of plastic and can always center your needle with this line. This piece of plastic, when you're ready to sew, gets removed. Save it, just set it aside for later. And then just snap on a foot that is an open toe, something that has good visibility. Let me get this lined up, all right. Now, let's see. Take one of these green stems no line. It's going to be right side up. We're going to take the square and place it on the corner. Wrong side, wrong side up or right sides together. Oh, these are such little pieces here. Get it lined up. Okay, I'm going to put the tip of the square right here in the line and then the opposite tip down here lining up with the center line. Let's see if I can get that lined up. Okay, I'm going to start there, right up at the tip. Hold my threads, get the stiletto, and then just as it moves along, have your square follow along that line. And then once that one is done, just grab up the second one and butt it right on behind. Right sides together. Now whenever you're doing points on stars, ooh, this method works great. You don't need to do all those diagonal lines. Okay, start right on the edge, line up the corner with that line. Now you'll be doing one in one direction for each tulip. And then remember, you've got your opposite direction. So I'm just going to take this piece and turn it in the opposite way, place it right sides together, and then line it up. So right through the tip, get anchored, match that, follow it along on that line. All right, now you'd be doing a whole long row of those once you have your stitching on your diagonal lines done. Let me take the two that are actually gonna go together. <laughs> no use in getting it confused. So now they're in opposite directions. You would have a whole big string of them, but you wanna lay your quarter inch line on your ruler, right on the stitching line, so that you can just trim that off. Okay, one there, and then you would just turn your ruler the second side. And then these little pieces, once they're sewn, all you need to do is just set the seam and then lift this up. Oh, and get right in there. Press that flat. And let's see how it's going to fit with the stem. Now these pieces are going to go on either side like this. One right here and one right here. And you actually want to have them all lined up across the top. You've got extra down on the bottom of that, on that center piece. So let's just take these and you put these right sides together and sew them right along there. Let me just take another piece. I'll just slide them right away and show you on one that's already finished. Okay, they've been added on the sides and then this top piece just gets place right sides together to it, and stitched right along the top, the quarter inch seam allowance. And once you have the two pieces attached, then just take your square up ruler. This is a 12 and a half inch square up ruler, and this is gonna finish it off fast. Line up the diagonal line right down through the center. Got the center here, I've got it in the middle of the stem. You've got that extra at the opposite end. 
And just hold your ruler firm and just trim up and over and you've got the tulip ready to sew into your quilt. Well, these are as fresh as can be. Let me just finish all of my tulips.